Recently, Looney Labs sent me a review copy of Ice Dice. Now, uh, don't tell Looney Labs this, but uh, I would have willingly bought a copy of that myself had they not sent me one. So, uh, score one for Steven. But uh, with that, they, uh, they actually sent me a copy of Star Flux. Now, Flux is a game that I've actively avoided throughout my gaming career because everything that I'd heard about it was that it was a solely uh, random experience. And that's, uh, that sort of thing doesn't fly with me. Uh, I can only tolerate randomness in my games if they serve a real purpose, but who knows, maybe, maybe I was misinformed. Now, Star Flux is the latest in the Flux franchise. Uh, there, there's been quite a few. It is, uh, it started out with the game Flux, but then they started adding themes to them. So there's been like Zombie Flux and Pirate Flux and Monty Python Flux. Uh, so this Star Flux, it's a, it's a two to six player game. Um, I've only played it with five and, and with two players. And uh, well, let's, let's see what I thought. This is what Star Flux looks like when you first start. It's simply your basic rules of Flux and the draw deck. And so what you do is you follow the rules on the basic card, which are to begin, shuffle, shuffle up the deck and deal three cards to each player. Choose someone to go first. Keep this card on the table. There isn't even a goal on the table yet, which I'll clarify right now. The way that goals are established in this game is on a player's turn, they can play a goal card such as this. And on this card it says, the player who has the monolith and the stars on the table wins. So that would get played on the table so everyone knows what the winning condition is, and that's anyone can fulfill that, not just the person who, who uh, played it. And then later on during the game, someone else could play a different goal card, such as this one, the space dock. The player who has the starship and the space station on the table wins. They play it, which replaces this goal, and then this goes into the discard. Player's hands are usually hidden, but I'll just place player one's hand here and player two's hand here just to make this easy to demonstrate. So let's say player one goes first. Uh, following the basic rules of flux, it says what you do is you draw one card and you play one card. So player one will draw a card into their hand and now they have to play a card. Um, I already explained how goals work, um, but I didn't mention that the goals are actually what you call keepers. And so if I wanted to play a keeper, which would help me win the game, I would play that to the table. And so everyone can see that I have a laser pistol available to me. So players two turn, they also draw a card and then they'll play a card. Uh, we'll have him play a goal. So this goal is the player who has the alien city and the bug-eyed monster wins. And we keep going back and forth like that. You draw a card and play a card. One of the interesting types of cards in this game are the new rule cards. So what this says is new rule, draw four cards. So I'll place this here. And now the rule of the game is you draw four cards and you play one card. And in this case, the player who plays this card will perform this immediately, so they'll get three new cards immediately. Later on, uh, another type of card that could have been played is um, this one here, which says play four. And this one will cover up the play area. So now the rule of the game is every single time it's your turn, you draw four cards and you play four cards. Beyond that, there are three other types of cards in the game. There are action cards, which cause a uh, certain action to happen immediately. Like this one would allow you to draw three cards and play two of them immediately. Um, there's the creeper card, which they go in the same area as your keepers. However, they attach to a keeper and cause bad things to happen to you. And there's surprise cards, which allow you to veto other cards that have been played. And finally, here's an example of how someone would win. So the goal card on the table is the player who has the energy crystals and the engineer on the table wins. And this player does have the energy crystals and the engineer, therefore they win immediately. Huh, well, um, my expectations were met. Uh, I didn't like this game whatsoever. And it pains me to say that because I don't want to say anything negative about, you know, things I received. But 
that for me, flux is almost a painful experience. Um, the only positives that, that I have to say for it are I do enjoy the theme of it. There, there's a lot of parody in, in all the cards where it's talking, like they, they look at different uh, science fiction movies and, and they try to put a little spin on it and have their own unique art. So there, there's references to like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and Star Trek and all sorts of things. Fortunately, this isn't where the review ends because uh, when I choose to play games with people, uh, I choose my audience very carefully and I have this one group of gamers who uh, they're primarily what you would call social gamers where the the game that's being played is, isn't the center focus of what's happening, it's more part of the social event and we happen to be playing a game. So, uh, and their primary games are like Killer Bunnies or Talisman or other lighter fare and you know they have fun playing those. So I introduced this game to them and I don't understand it but they freaking fell in love with it right away. Uh, they just they liked the theme, they, they loved exploring all the cards and, and seeing all the the neat sci-fi references and they, they liked the the actual gameplay itself. They liked how simple it was where you're just playing cards, stuff happens, someone wins. And, and I'm, I'm sitting there I'm like what world have I stepped into where, where someone's enjoying this? But they they absolutely loved it, and I, pfft, I I'm just I'm I'm perplexed. But I, whatever. Um. So, uh. So I like I said I don't like this game. Uh. I wish I could see some redeeming qualities of it, but I don't. But my friends loved it so much, and well, good for them because this coffee is going straight to my friend and he will happily add it to his collection. So, you win some, you lose some, just, it's not for me.